This is Stephanie Lobo, and today I will be diagnosing Charlie from The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The Perks of Being a Wallflower was written and later adapted into a movie and was directed by the author Stephen Chbosky. IMDb describes the movie as socially awkward teen Charlie is a wallflower. He's always watching life from the sidelines until two charismatic students become his mentors. Sam and her stepbrother Patrick help Charlie discover the joys of friendship, first love, music, and more, while a teacher sparks Charlie's dreams of becoming a writer. However, as his new friends prepare to leave for college, Charlie's inner sadness threatens to shatter his newfound confidence. In case you're not familiar with the word wallflower, imagine walking into a party. You see everybody dancing and drinking, but then you see that person sitting in the corner just watching. They're in the sidelines. They see things, they keep quiet about them, and they understand. This is Charlie. Charlie Kalenkis is the main protagonist in the movie, who's portrayed by Logan Lerman. The movie opens up by Charlie writing a letter on his typewriter saying, Dear friend, I am writing to you because she said you listen and understand. I just need to know that someone out there listens and understands and doesn't try to sleep with people, even if they could have. So this is my life and I want you to know that I'm both happy and sad, and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. We soon figure out that Charlie spent some time in a psychiatric hospital the previous summer because his friend Michael committed suicide. Charlie's introverted and shy and is really scared about starting high school until two seniors who happen to be siblings adopt him and build a good friendship. Charlie loves hanging out with Sam and Patrick, but as he starts hanging out with them, and learning about music in real life, his feelings of sadness start coming out. That's when we start to learn everything about Charlie. Charlie shows symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, social phobia, and major depression, which might have rooted from his PTSD. Charlie has PTSD, which is listed as a trauma disorder in the DSM-5, as a result of being sexually abused as a child. We do not find out that he's abused by his aunt until the end of the movie, but he shows symptoms of PTSD throughout. PTSD consists of intrusive and persistent cognitive, emotional, and psychological symptoms such as re-experiencing, which means having flashbacks and nightmares, avoidance of the event, negative cognition and mood, and reckless or self-destructive behavior. Charlie does re-experience flashbacks and nightmares about being abused, even though they are murky and he is not sure where they come from. He avoids being touched by people, and he feels bad about himself and others. By the end of the movie, he wants to kill himself, showing reckless or self-destructive behavior. A symptom that Charlie does not express in the movie is hypervigilance and difficulty sleeping or staying asleep, which are symptoms of PTSD. Charlie also experiences social phobia, which falls under anxiety disorders in the DSM-5. According to the DSM-5, individuals with PTSD are 80% more likely than those without PTSD to have symptoms that meet diagnostic criteria for at least one other mental disorder. This is called comorbidity. Social phobia consists of having a marked fear about one or more social situations in which the individual is exposed to possible scrutiny by others. The social situations are thus often avoided or endured with intense anxiety. Charlie is very submissive and shy, and he is not talkative. He is very scared about making friends. His first friend is his English teacher, and he continues to be his friend throughout. He is scared to take part in life. Charlie does not experience fear when meeting people in authority or eating in front of them, which are symptoms of social phobia. Thirdly. Charlie also suffers from major depressive disorder. Depression consists of mainly having low moods or loss of interest in daily activities, feeling sad and empty, significant weight change, insomnia or hypersomnia, guilt, worthlessness, lack of concentration, and suicidality. Charlie struggles throughout the whole movie to know who he is, and he is sad. He says, there's so much pain and I don't know how to not notice it. It never stops. Every day is a struggle. He is sad all the time. This stems from his PTSD, but he does suffer from depression as well. 
Charlie does not experience symptoms of gain or weight loss. A possible treatment plan for PTSD, anxiety, and depression is medication and therapy. Towards the end of the movie, Charlie has a pretty big breakdown, so he is taken to a mental hospital where he is recommended to have therapy and medication. The best type of therapy for PTSD is probably CBT, since it works with emotions and thoughts, and its long-term goal is to change perceptions and behaviors. What we do affects how we think and feel. Medicine also makes living easier since it increases serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain, changing how we think and feel. There are ethical concerns about medication, and some people believe that it does not work, but it is not highly controversial. Also with therapy, it is pretty socially acceptable. The psychological disorders are presented pretty realistically in the movie. Throughout the whole movie, it is not exaggerated. It is pretty subtle how Charlie feels and he mentions what it's like to feel the way he does. Even when they go to the mental hospital at the end, it is not exaggerated. This is why this movie has been such a success among teenagers because they feel like they are finally understood by Hollywood. Even though Charlie deals with the psychological disorders, he gets treatment at the end, so we hope that he feels better and that he's able to live a more normal life thanks to psychology.